So we are live. Uh, I am here with comrade from Communist uh, Communistische Organisation, Communist Organisation from Germany. Hello, Alex, comrade. Hello. Uh, so the most important thing which we need to start our conversation. Uh, you need to. Uh, uh, Ah, it's mine. I, I, I make some missing. Wait, wait. Uh, so, um, so the first thing which we, we need to start it when we uh, try to find your organization in Google, there are two sides of communist organization. The, 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 in the description box, you can find link to your organization. It's communistische organization dot uh, uh, d. Could 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 could, uh, could you explain us why there are two sites internet uh, uh, with uh, very similar with, with the same name? Okay. Um... I will make it fast because uh, this topic is maybe not so interesting for our interview today because I would like to talk about uh, the situation worldwide, how imperialism is uh, developing. But um, our organization has made a split in January of this year. Uh, before we were one organization with the name Kommunistische Organisation. And uh, during the last year, there uh, developed a big discussion about uh, what uh, we think is actually now happening uh, in the world with uh, the war that is going on in Ukraine. And in our organization, as in the whole communist movement, we had uh, the same discussion if this war uh, should be characterized as a uh, imperialist war made by the imperialist Russian uh, Russian um, state, or if uh, the special military operation that Russia is uh, doing is. Um, is a defense act against the uh, Ukrainian fascism that is built up by the NATO forces, especially by the USA. And there was a big discussion in our um, organization and we planned to uh, clarify these questions in our organization. Um, as you can see on our website, uh, the aim of our organization is to organize a clarification process which means that uh, we see that the communist movement is in a big crisis that there is a lot of communist parties in the world with different point of views and uh, in order to build up an international uh, communist party and uh, on the international way and a strong uh, communist party in germany we have to clarify these questions on a scientific basis, based on the uh, scientific socialism, that means dialectical and historical materialism. And uh, the comrades uh, in our organization uh, uh, leaded this uh, discussion about uh, how we characterize the war that is going on in Ukraine and we made a big uh, congress in Berlin in September where we have discussed these questions and after this quest uh, after this congress um, the, we want we plan to uh, continue the discussion and the clarification and to find out how Russia is standing in the uh, imperialist world order, what uh, the USA are, uh, what is the role of the USA, uh, why Russia is doing this war in this uh, concrete situation. And uh, some comrades in our organization um, uh, didn't accept the point of view that uh, there are people in our organization 
who say that the war Russia is leading in Ukraine is an act of self-defense. They said that this is a revisionist and opportunist position and they uh, decided to split the organization, that they don't want to be organized with people who have this uh, position, such as me, for example. And um, so the um, the process went on and led to the situation that in January of this year, we, uh, we had the split that uh, these people has... Uh, left our organization and they didn't uh, accept that they have left the organization. They have organized an own congress and uh, they call themselves such as uh, uh, such as we do still Kommunistische Organisation. And this is the current situation. Uh, my question was very easy because you are not the first party in the world which is divided in the question of the war in Ukraine. Uh, I only have problem with understand why uh, it's after one year of the war. Uh, my I, I created organization named the Polish Workers Party. I, it's it, it was created in January uh, two, uh, 2012 and uh, 2020 and uh, no uh, no it was created in January 21 and one year later I I, I, I quit this party in in February uh, because some of the problems, but the, one of the most important problems uh, was the question of war. Maybe not, it was before war, but uh, we already knew that uh, the, war, the, the war can start. And there, uh, there was some uh, tactical uh, question uh, who is our ally? Uh, who is our enemy? And my position was clear that uh, all the forces which supported expansion NATO to, to East, uh, for example, Polish so social democracy, it's our enemy. And it is impossible to make uh, any collaboration with some guys from the social democracy. Uh, and it was very... Um, important to say because before we tried to um, maybe not make entries in the social democracy but we have some uh, some friends there and we tried to to put communist propaganda in the YAF organization of the uh, Polish social democracy uh, but uh, when uh, when the situation was clear that there will be war and the uh, Polish social democracy will support war, uh, I said, no, we need to break this contact and we need to try to make, uh, try to find some alliance with other forces which are in the same position against NATO and the problem is that in Poland, uh, the most people uh, which I consider anti anti war, anti imperialist, it's not leftists, but the um, nationalists, uh, Polish nationalists. Uh, it's complicated because most of the Polish forces now in Poland are nationalists, but uh, there are some minority of the Polish nationalists which are against NATO's uh, and uh, I, I prefer to, to make a collaboration with guys like this than with the lefties which are uh, like your ex-member of, the, of uh, your ex-comrades. Um... I wouldn't say that our ex-comrades are social democrats. I didn't know. If, I don't know if you meant this. No, 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 um, no, no, no. no. Uh, no I, I didn't say that they, they are social democrats. But uh, for me, somebody 
who are who is not clear in the question and he tried to say to to repeat the imperialist propaganda about uh, bad putin dictator and all, all this stuff uh, i i don't to be a member a communist organization i i can listen this this shit in the corporate media or government media they repeat this stuff all the time and if i in my free time i want to participate in the building organization first things we need to make have a independent uh, independent ideology independent from our bourgeoisie independent from the uh, the, the polish government uh, it's it's very very uh, it's, it's 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 a compromitation for the forces who consider them like a marxist leftist social democrat anarchist uh, they are saying that they are revolutionary but when there is a question of the war in ukraine they repeat exactly the same propaganda with the uh, bourgeois imperialist pro uh, government and it is a case uh, if your cam ex comrades from uh, they repeat the propaganda of german government it's it's much it's much more worse than social democracy it's a, it's a, it's a social fascism it's a, it's a support for the imperialist expansion uh, expansion and uh, it's nothing to do with idea uh, of uh, the revolutionary movement? Um, I wouldn't say that it's uh, social fascism. I think you take uh, this word from uh, the historical the historical position from the Comintern yes. in the time of the 20s. I would not say that the position of our ex-comrades is uh, social fascist. Because um, I I am with you that you say that at some point they reproduce the ideology of our bourgeoisie. For example, they say that um, the 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 offensive act of uh, Russian imperialism is against uh, Ukraine, and that they are. Uh, that they are against this uh, offensive faction. And this is uh, definitely the thing that our bourgeoisie and our uh, government says too. But social fascism is more uh, for me. I think it's also a direct collaboration with the bourgeoisie. Yes, exactly. Um, and I, I consider Ukraine like a fascist state. And, uh, and uh, the people who are against denazification uh are the collaborators of of nazis are the collaborators of the the guys from battalion azov responsible for the ethnic cleansing in the last nine years uh every uh, and uh, there are a lot of lefties in the world which consider themselves oh we are antifa anti-fascist uh, we fight the nation but in the same time uh, the consequence of the of the hatred against against Russia now is supporting real fascist forces responsible for real killings in 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 Donbas, and uh, for me it is a clear collaboration because because everybody know what what is ukraine today that uh, in, in in ukraine today uh, i made interview with a comrades from rabochi front ukraine it's a workers front of ukraine and uh, they said what is the situation that for singing the international song uh, you are going to prison for 7 years for seven years only for singing um, uh, international so it's a, it's a fascist state and uh, and supporting for example sending weapon there or or uh, or sending money or other stuff even even no uh, because you know the uh, very often the guys said 
I am not supporting Zelensky, but we need to fight the Russian imperialism. And he uh, uh, talking about the Russian imperialism is uh, it's uh, it's ridiculous in in the time when we have in one side. 800 military bases of of USA uh, in every co uh, in every continent and uh, in every year if there are some movement or some country which are don't want to to respect the law of the neoliberal economy uh, <laughs> It can be attacked uh, or sanctioned uh, or make a, a color revolution or other other bad stuff. And in the other side, we, you have Russia, which uh, is uh, maybe not a socialist state, uh, but uh, it's it's not the same level like uh, Western imperialism. It's something totally uh, totally different. And also the situation in Crimea is totally different than the situation where the uh, American go to killing Iraqi. For example, when the uh, George W. Bush uh, made decision to uh, to to uh, attack Iraq in 2003, he said uh, about the uh, crusade, crusade uh, there were all these. Uh, anti-Islamophobic um, stuff and also the disrespect of the Arab people and uh, the, all this racism, which is that it is the war of the civilization and we are better because we are white, because we are Christian and they are the savage so people. Uh, maybe from, from in the territories which are now taken by the Russia, Maybe it's it is not perfect, but uh, it's the same language, the same religion, the same culture. M most of these people in in Crimea or Donbas they support, uh, they prefer Russian Federation than than Ukraine uh, today, and it is a totally different situation. And if somebody telling about bad Putin and imper uh, imperialist Russia. Uh, the consequence of this is supporting the the Ukraine today, Ukraine with all these banderite ideas. Yes, yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, uh, I think you're right. Um, actually, uh, an important uh, argument for the people who say that. Um, Russia is leading an imperialist aggression against Ukraine is that they say that uh, Russia has economic interests in Ukraine which is right actually but they compare these economic interests with uh, the things uh, with the economic and financial power USA and the UR, EU are able to um uh, to use in the countries that they want to conquer. For example, they uh, compare the um, uh, the investments of Russian companies with the investments uh, US American and, and Western European co uh, companies are doing in these countries. They compare the export of financial capital from the from the us with the export of russian financial capital which is very wrong in my opinion because uh find i th in, in as things i have read say that uh, the export of financial capital of russia is nothing more or than a uh than a flight no how is it called in english uh Give me a second. Uh, a flight and ex escape of financial capital from Russia because uh, the Russian uh, national economy is not uh, as profitable as um, other as other uh, economies and a uh, Russian uh, uh, bank capital is leaving the country. 
it's not the same as the uh, power the USA and Western Europe can uh, can make with their export of of capital and um, the suppression. They uh, are not able to make the suppression. I cannot say this better in English, but the the point is that um, this uh, point these people are doing with that Russia is uh, is having um, economic interests in this country is of course right, but uh, the quality of this economic power you cannot compare, not at all. Uh, Russian capitalism, Russia's national uh, economy is still um, very weak, very uh, damaged because of the uh, results of the counter-revolution and is not able to make the same uh, economic suppression such as Germany and the US. The last point is that Russia still today is accepting that Ukraine is going to the EU. They know that if uh, Ukraine is going to EU, uh, there will not be any, there will not be any economic uh, uh, spheres. How is uh, um, connections? Union connections, yes. U uh, connections to to Russia, and they know this, and they accept it. So this is for me a sign that Russia. Uh, knows very well its own economic uh, weakness and is not able to uh, to control Ukraine by these things. Some let me make this last point. Some uh, of our ex comrades argument that, for example, the um, Russia is able to make uh, economic uh, power, uh, economic pressure on Germany and uh, other European uh, economies with this export of oil and gas. That uh, Russia is able to say, okay, if you don't follow our politics, we can close uh, uh, North Stream 2 and the Druzhba pipeline. And we see that this is not true. Uh, I think we both, uh, we know that who is the power who has made the explosion in the Nord Stream 2 and that it was not Russia who closed the Nord Stream pipelines and the Druzhba pipelines. Uh, so this argument is wrong too. So in general, we can see that Russia is not at all able to make the same economic power in, uh, in its, uh, its spheres of interest like USA and Germany are doing. And this is a big mistake. Our ex-comrades and people who say that uh, Russia is uh, an imperialist power are, uh, are doing. But, and that's my last point, we as a communist organization, we don't have a position in this question still. Uh, the things that I said is uh, my own position. We are not a party. You said we, we are a party who has split. We are not a party. We are an organization. And it's the aim of the organization is to clarify the most important uh, questions of the communist movement. We see that uh, we don't have the ideological power and the personal power that we can call ourselves a party. And we are still finding our position uh, about what, how we characterize uh, Russia. But at the point that uh, the NATO has to lose uh, its uh, struggle in the world, this is our position. We are uh, against NATO and we say uh, our parole is uh, the NATO has to lose in Ukraine and in the whole world. So we are live and there are some, it's not very popular channel. My other channel in Polish is more popular, uh, but there is some comrades from Canada 
who wrote I love the KO documentaries on the DDR, uh, the DDR, the best Germany. And there is a question for you. Um, do you think that most of Germans share Sarah Wagenknecht opinion? We don't want German tanks shooting at the great grandchildren of this Russia, men and women uh, whose uh, great parents were killed by the Wehrmacht. We don't want their great grandchildren to be shot with German guns again. This is uh, the complete oblivion of history. Yes, uh, this is a great question um, because uh, we were faced to this question at the last weekend. As you know, at the last weekend there was the, uh, the it was twenty fourth of February, so uh, one year ago Russia Russia has started its its military intervention in Ukraine, and we went on a big demonstration in um, in Berlin and in other cities. Uh, we have organized a small uh, meetings against the war NATO is leading against Russia. And we were talking a lot with the people on the streets. You can, on Thursday, by the way, you will find uh, um, an article uh, about this this about this about weekend from us in, in Germany, in German, but you can translate it. It will be on Thursday. We're going to publish this. And we have talked with a lot of people. And in the interesting point is that actually most of the people uh, followed this position that it's an uh, oblivion of history that Germany is again sending tanks and heavy weapons to Ukraine in order to fight uh, to fight Russians to kill Russians and um, this is interesting because the propaganda in our country every day tries to mix everything up. They say that Germany at this uh, situation is sending weapons and tanks to Ukraine in order to uh, to uh, to defend Ukraine from Russia's fascism. So they turn around the historical words and they say that Germany, because of its fascist history, has the Advietstunist, uh, sorry. Ah, responsibility. Uh, yes, responsibility. Uh, sorry, my Russian is better than my English, but we can continue. No, 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 we stay because we have comrades from Canada and we should okay. talk. Yeah. So uh, the, uh, the Germany, and this is really crazy because I think this is only in Germany because we are the only country with this history, that Germany uh, has the responsibility as to support Ukraine because of its fascist history. That now we are a democratic Germany and we have to so support every country who is defending, uh, who is defending against uh, fascism. This is actually the same argumentation for our ruling class to argue that uh, Germany has to support Israel because of its special uh, historical responsibility. And I mean, this is a this is a very strong argument, right? Because the, as we know, the fascist history of Germany was uh, terrible. Um, it was fascist terror. It has killed six million people. And our ruling class at the moment is using this this history in order to uh, to argue its uh, its aggressive imperialist uh, politics in uh, in in Ukraine against Russia and this is a big problem but it's very interesting that many people on the streets we were talking with 
they uh, do not accept this argumentation. They said, "Hey guys, what what are you what are you telling? How can you say that uh, we have to support uh, Ukraine when the Ukrainian government is full with fascist forces? You are supporting fascists who are fighting against Russians with German tanks. How can you say?" that this is because of your uh, historical responsibility. This is a, uh, this is a very uh, big, uh, big lie and the peop many people in Germany, they understand it. But of course, on the other hand, you have many people in Germany who believe it. They go on uh, demonstrations and they say, okay, we have to, we have to defend uh, democracy. Uh, in Europe, we have to defend the Ukrainian democracy, and that's why we have to send tanks and weapons to this country. And they deny that uh, there is uh, the fascist forces in Ukraine are the main political forces in in the country of Ukraine and in the government. They deny it, and our media and our propaganda, uh, they are very very uh they they deny it every day when you uh turn on the radio you can hear uh, that ukraine is a democratic country and if there is questions about fascist forces in ukraine they say well of course there is fascist forces but they are not the main political power and as we both know this is a big lie we know that the fascist forces in Ukraine are very important. They are, has been uh, built up by the NATO in order to uh, construct an anti-Russia in Ukraine, in the country that was always uh, very well connected to, to, to Russia. And the fascist forces since the uh, Maidan uh, the, the Maidan uh, uh, Gosprivot, uh, coup, the Maidan coup. Ah, putsch or see, you can say. Putsch is everybody understand putsch. Okay, the the Maidan coup, the fascist forces has been built up, and before the Maidan coup too. And uh, in Germany, the the media and the propaganda and the politics are uh, trying to deny this every day but many people don't believe it and this is a good point for our agitation i will interrupt you now in this question because in poland we we had a similar problem uh, that they denied that in the uh, modern ukraine is a fascist state but it changed it changed and um, i think that uh, since january it's already two months now they know that everybody in poland know that there are the cult of the banderites in in ukraine so now, now they change uh, the position and now they try to explain that yes Bandera is not a bad guy. It is a guy similar to Polish Piłsudski. He fight uh, for independent. Maybe he was a little radical, but we need to accept this. There are our friends. This is a national liberal uh, 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 um, liberated movement and stuff like that. So, so, so it is total capitulation. That firstly they try to present no, no. The, the 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 banderites it's it's a small minority it's only one or two percent of the of the society now when they know that everybody knows that there are majority of the ukrainians uh, this which which can spew, uh, speak loudly because uh, maybe there are a lot of ukrainians uh, which are not banderites but they are they are silent these ukrainians who who are uh, who are are um, invited to to media these uh, ukrainians who which are active in the streets of warsaw and other european cities 
uh, they are very, very radical banderized, very often with tattoos, with some uh, red and black uh, UPA, UPA flag and, and other stuff like this. So now they know, okay, okay, there are cool bandera, but it's, it's, not, it's not a big problem. It's, it's something like Piłsudski, it's, 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 it's like this. Uh, so I have two questions for you. Firstly, could you say something about uh, uh, Russophobia in Germany? Because in Poland it is very, very big problem. And um, I, I hope that in Germany is a little better uh, because uh, <laughs> I very often uh, visit Germany because from going from France to Poland, every time I need to cross uh, Germany and always I visit some, some cemetery of the uh, Soviet soldiers or, or some monuments, car marks in East Germany and stuff like this. In Poland, in last year, they destroyed this. They destroyed the monuments of the uh, Soviet soldiers who which liberated Poland. They uh, destroyed the cemeteries of the Russian, so, uh, the Soviet soldiers, uh, and also they they we have very very aggressive Russia phobic propaganda against not only Russian politicians but uh, against Russian nation the all these racist racist uh, stuff uh, you can now hear in, in Poland how uh, what is the situation in, in Germany yes um, actually I've never been to Poland but uh, I really want to travel there because uh, I'm really interested in how anti-communism and Russo, uh, uh, anti-Russian racism is developed in, in your country because I am just always I'm hearing about what is going on in your country and my impression is that um, Russophobia uh, is strong in Germany but not as strong as in Poland I think that Poland and maybe Czech Republic are the worst countries Uh, concerning this topic in Europe but Germany well you know uh, the ruling class in Germany um, in the last uh, years since the counter-revolution in Eastern Germany and uh, Soviet Union uh, they are connected with Russia uh, Russia is uh, needed for German economy for German capitalists as um, uh, as a guarantee for cheap gas and oil as you know we don't have uh, big uh, amounts we don't have big amounts of uh, gas and oil uh, in germany so we have to import this uh, for the imperialist development of, of germany and um, the possibility for our companies to sell their products uh, cheaply and to conquer uh, the, the markets. A cheap energy and cheap oil and gas is very important for, uh, for, for, uh, for them. And the only possibility in the last years was to import cheap oil and gas from Russia. So our ruling class and our politics all the time tried to keep up a, a relationship to Russia which is not friendly but not as um, like like uh, to to characterize uh, Russia as an enemy as exam as for example in Poland or Czech Republic but um, in especially in western germany there is still in the in the brains of the people and the head heads of the people there is still a big russophobia because uh, western germany was a very uh, important counterpart for soviet union uh, until the uh, until the counter revolution there is big very very big differences and many people in the world don't know this 
there are big, big differences uh, concerning Russophobia in Western and Eastern Germany. East Germany, as you know, was socialist GDR. And still the people here after uh, 24 years of counter-revolution still have a, especially the older people, they have a good connection to Russia. They uh, don't want to fight against Russia. They want good relationship to Russia. In Western Germany is a big difference. I, I live in Eastern Germany, in Leipzig, for 10 years, but my family is from Western Germany. And the differences between my family and my and the people I'm talking here with are very big. Because in Western Germany, Russophobia was always present. It was during the Second World War. As we know, the Hitler and the Nazi uh, government was very anti-communist, anti-Russian. And it continued in Western Germany without any break. Yeah. Uh, in Eastern Germany is big difference. We had the denazification process after the end of the war here in Eastern Germany. This did not happen in Western Germany. And uh, that's why there is a complete different political climate here in Eastern Germany. But after the beginning of the military intervention in February of last year, the situation has um, has changed. Um, there, uh, I think there's two factors. The first point is the immigration of many Ukrainian uh, refugees here. And the big number of them uh, is, of course, very anti-Russian. The second point is, of course, the propaganda. Um, since, uh, well, when the, the, the military intervention of Russia has started, there was a big change in media and um, in TV about, uh, about Russia. Um, Russia now is an enemy in Germany. Uh, two weeks ago, our foreign minister, Annalena Baerbock, uh, accidentally declared the war to Russia. Yeah, In TV shows, you uh, can see uh, professors who say that Russians are not really Europeans, that they, they look different than we do, but Ukrainians, they are, uh, they are Europeans and all this racist stuff. So um, the mood in Germany is uh, changing dramatically. And I think the ruling class in Germany needs to build up this mood in Germany in order to um, justify the, the, the sendings of weapons and tanks to, to Ukraine. Because the, the German people actually, they don't want to have to do anything with war, you know? We have started two world wars, and I think uh, in the in the German uh, society, the people are not really, you know, militaristic, and our ruling class is trying to make this militaristic and anti-Russian mood stronger. Um, the last actions that happened in, uh, against Russians are uh, racist attacks especially uh, when the military intervention started. Um, by the way, accident, accidentally, there were attacked also re Ukrainian people because these uh, races, they could not differ between Ukrainian and Russian people because they, the language sounds the same. So accidentally, they attacked also uh, Ukrainian people. And uh, another point is uh, in school. Many, many Ukrainians speak Russian. It's not only yeah, and the they do speak, that... of course, and they do speak Russian, of course, and they have been attacked. Uh, the other point is we have uh, 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 schools. Uh, in schools, you know that there is a big uh, uh, Russian uh, minority in Germany because many Russians have 
uh, they came to to Germany after the counter revolution in ninety uh, one in Soviet Union. They came to to Germany and their children and the second generation are Germans now. They are here. They are learning in schools, but of course they are teachers and they are friends. The other children in school they know that they are uh, immigrants, and it has never been a problem. Uh, well, there was always anti-Russian racism, of course. But now uh, many uh, parents are reporting us that the racist Askarblenia um, Askarblenia Ah, offenses that this offend insulting right like yes. you russian uh, shit of peace and all this stuff yeah that they uh, become more in schools and the children of course they don't understand a comrade of me reported me that uh, the russian comrade uh, who is organized in our organization she said that uh, her uh, small uh, sister she is very uh, she is doing very well in mathematics and uh, the teacher said to her, okay, you are the best person in mathematics. Uh, go to Putin and show him how uh, Russian people can be good, can, can act good. And the child, she was, uh, I think, nine or ten years. She didn't understand what's going on because she doesn't know, she doesn't know anything about politics. And this is an example. Okay, last point. Um, Russian monuments, uh, as you have reported, they do not exist in uh, Western Germany. Okay, they exist all, only in uh, East Germany, in our cities here. And uh, they, w I think that they would never dare to uh, destroy these monuments because there would be a very big protests here because uh, especially the people in Eastern Germany understand that the Red Army has uh, freed our people from the fascists, from the German fascists. So I think they will not be this destroyed. But you can see that some pro-Ukrainian or fascist or liberal act, uh, activists, they throw uh, colors on this monument. A red color to show like that this is blood or blue and yellow colors and at the weekend maybe you have seen it uh, i hope that you have seen it because it's a scandal in uh, berlin some activists i still don't know who it was if it was ukrainian or german activists they placed a tank in front of the russian embassy in Berlin. It is a burnt T-72 tank and they placed this tank in front of the embassy and the weapon of the tank, I don't know how to call it in English, is aiming at the uh, at the on the house of the uh, of the of the embassy. So uh, this is a big scandal, and I still don't know who is doing that. this. But the racist and anti-Russian uh, mood in Germany uh, is grown up by the ruling class, by our political elite. Uh, but I think they have difficulties to, uh, to uh, make efforts in this. Yes, exactly. Here is the country. Thank you. No, it is it is Ukrainian seat side. side. You see, it's it's uh, yeah. military. Yeah, I think they are proud of it, you know. But uh, I mean, it's crazy uh, to to place the tank in front of the Russian embassy. And I think that the um, government of Berlin. Uh, they must have accepted this. Of course, uh, you, you can't uh, go to the city with tank. With, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so I, I, I will show you something. Do you know where is it? Yep, I live next to this. <laughs> uh, so, so you are a neighbor of my brother because also he, he, he lives next to this park. Uh, I know a little uh, Leipzig, but uh, um, before he lived in Halle. Uh, so I better know Halle than, than, than Leipzig. Uh, okay, there are um, this word which you sh which we try to find. It's, uh, in the West today, they don't say coop or put anymore because this word sounds bad. Now they say regime change or supporting democracy. Uh, <laughs> what the German think of Scholz who was standing next to Biden on the 7 um, um, uh, 2022 when Biden announced the US will take down Nord Stream and Scholz did not say a word. Is, isn't this huge humiliation for Germany? Germany. Yes, um, very, very good question. I think I, who, who is this? Is it people from Canada who are asking this or what? Uh, no, no, this is guy from Poland. All right. Okay. Um, well, uh, you know, of course, the thing that Biden has said on this day is completely crazy. And I mean, both of us, we know that uh, it was the USA who has brought <clears throat> Nord Stream to an explosion. And both we know that uh, the... Uh, this is a uh, terrorist act. This is a terrorist act against Germany as a state. And the interesting thing is that uh, the ruling class in Germany and the political powers, they try everything to make this, uh, to make the people don't understand that, you, that the United States has exploded the, the pipeline. Uh, there is a lot of um, people now, a lot of journalists, who say, who say that the uh, the article of um, of the guy who has made uh, the what is his name again? Who made uh, the, Seymour Hirsch? Yes, the the article of Seymour Hirsch uh, is wrong. That it's uh, fake news. And they bring the worst arguments for this. Um, I mean, every uh, for everybody is clear that uh, the, the 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 U.S. Uh, United States did this, but the German uh, ruling class is trying to to make this uh, to to make to make this seem that uh, they don't know who it was that. They are not sure that it was the U.S. that the U.S. could not do this because it was not uh, possible to make this diving operation in the Eastern Sea uh, because uh, the sea is full of uh, full of um, uh, full with uh, things that control the sea, so they sh they could not be unexpected. Uh, un uh, uh, they must have been seen when they did it. But the joke is that the Eastern Sea is controlled by the US itself. So, of course, it's clear that uh, they, the divers could do this without any problems. So Wait, um, wait, wait. But you, your organization also can make a joke, make a, a political movement for demanding the NATO to use the fifth article of NATO that attacked for one of the member of NATO, yes. it is a attack for all the NATO. So use NATO yes. against United States and, and Norway yes. is declaring war against you. Yes, of course. But uh, you know that it's only a joke that uh, the, the US, when they do it, uh, the German uh government is to make it to, um, that, to show that it's not true that they did it and i mean it's clear why they do it they don't want to 
to to create an anti-American mood in Germany. They are very. Uh, they know very well that Germany is very. And the imperialist uh, effort of Germany is very. Um, it's it's very important for Germany to keep up uh, good relations to to the United States. But of course, there are big uh, political uh, movements, for example, or, or parties. For example, we have the AfD, is a very conservative and uh, right wing party with fascist elements they say that um, Germany has to clarify who made this attack they are sure that uh, the United States did it and as you know uh, this uh, explosion is also no topic in the Security Council of the United Nations and uh, yeah we will see what they will find out but uh, the media here in Germany is really, uh, they try to make it not to be a topic, you know, there's not many reports about this topic. And if there are articles about this topic, these articles try to uh, try to deny that this was a terrorist attack against uh, against Germany. Uh, yeah, Biden said we will bring an end to Nord Stream 2 and, uh, 2 and we can do it. And um, Trust nobody, me, we will do it. And Trust me, we will find a way how to destroy it. We will find a way and they have found a way. But in Germany, uh, people do not talk so much about it because uh, the, the media in Germany is not making it uh, a topic. Yes, we have uh, made an, a speech. You have uh, you have opened our our website with the speeches of the last weekend, and there is one speech uh, about the economic sanctions against Russia. Uh, yes, there is look speeches on the anniversary with the yes exactly, and there is a speech with the uh, economic sanctions and uh, there we say that uh, the United States did this. Yeah, but this is how ideology and media is working in Germany. Okay, I, I would like to um, talk more about AFD because um, uh, communist organization uh, is like a name, is a left organization, communist Sarah Wagenknecht also, also is uh, from the Social Democratic Party, but in the anti-war movement in Germany, there are also the people from the right side, as you say, AFD. And how you can explain this paradox that in the same time there are the Green Party, which the origin of the German Green Party, it's uh, there were some Maoist, uh, anarchist, uh, radical left. We can make said that that the origin of the German Green Party is uh, is the far uh, far left. And now this party is one of the most aggressive forces uh, to pushing NATO against Russia. And in the other side, we have the AFD, the party with the fascist background. I don't, I don't want to say that today this party is a fascist, but uh, I heard, I don't know, it is true or not. It is a question for you. Is there are some fascists uh, in, in, this, in this party? And how for you it is uh, that uh, you are participating in one in demonstration with the guy from IFD? It is it is the problem for you, or uh, did you talk with them? The relations are good or bad because one week ago there was a big meeting in United States. It's called Rage Against War Machine. 
and it's finished because the left is starting to make fight with the right wings there uh, they, they they were together against against imperialist politic of the uh, government but it was the first and the last meeting of this uh, this movement because this collabor collaboration uh, left and uh, right didn't work if in your I, 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 do you think that in germany it will work this collaboration sarah wagenknecht communist organization afd or not uh, first of all i want to say that the afd is a very dangerous party for the german uh, working class um, in my point of view and we have made a lot of uh, research about the AfD um, soon also soon we will publish an article about this party and we have also written a speech on the same uh, web page you have opened about the AfD and it is very very important to understand that everything the AfD uh, says about um, the about peace and about the war in Russia is demagogy. Uh, if you look into the program of the AfD, you will find that the AfD is not against NATO, that the AfD um, uh, wants to make a bigger militarization of Germany, that they want to spend more money of the German uh, national income for uh, the for our army, for the Bundeswehr. So the AfD, uh, AfD party is a militaristic and a bourgeois party. Uh, its social basis is uh, the um, parts of the German uh, of the German ruling class who are I think this is my personal opinion but we have to make more research about this and we will do this that the social basis of the AfD are parts of the ruling class who are aiming for in German imperialism that is more who is more independent from from uh, from the US from the United States um, as we know in German history, and we are living in a, in a strong Germany again, that always when German imperialism tried to build up its own independent way, uh, Germany became a big danger for the worldwide peace. So we are very, very strongly warning against any collaboration with this party. Um, I see that there are, for example, in Poland or in Czech Republic, there are uh, national parties with a program that is maybe close to the AfD. For example, uh, last week we have uh, made a presentation about the movement in Czech Republic against the gas prices. And I've seen that the KSJM, the Communist Party of Bohemia and I don't know how it's in English. Uh, yes, I, know, I cannot speak Czech, actually. Mm -hmm. And I could say it in German and nobody would understand it. Um, they have made uh, demonstrations also with national parties against the gas prices. But this is a big uh, difference, okay? Because uh, Czech and Poland are countries who are uh, weaker who are not uh, capitalist uh, central countries such as Germany. So a nationalist party in Germany is def definitely something else than in a weaker uh, country. And uh, so how is social demagogy of AfD working? Uh, it says, for example, we should spend more money for our German uh, children for our German uh, old people for the German people and not spend so much money for the refugees and the asylum seekers moreover they say that uh, we should 
um, not fight against Russia in order to to uh, build up a stronger Germany. They are against any um, labor unions. In these questions, they are a very liberal party. They say that uh, labor parties should be weakened, should be weakened in, in Germany. And of course, they are very racist. They're, they are a big problem for the unity of German and foreign workers. We have a lot of uh, foreign workers in Germany. We, we are an immigration uh, society. There is a big percentage of immigrants here in Germany. And these immigrants are used by the capital to push down the wakes. Yeah, they, they use them and say, okay, guys, if you don't want to work for 12 euro per hour, you can leave. We will find uh, an Arab refugee who will work for this, for this wake. And uh, we say that the German and the foreign workers have to fight together. And the racist ideology of AfD is uh, disturbing this uh, this struggle. This is a big uh, problem. So uh, finally, I would really like to warn everything, uh, every uh, communist in Germany, and there are no communists, by the way, in Germany who are doing this to collaborate with the AfD party. Okay, and what is your analysis of the um, Green Party? That yes. uh, uh, the, the question: How it is possible that the guys like Joschka Fischer, who participated in the anti-imperialist movement, uh, maybe this Green Party today is not his generation, but he was responsible for bombing Yugoslavia. And I think that the today's leader of the Green Party also in the past they they participated in the same good ideas. Yes, very good question, a uh, very important question for uh, us as communists. Um, you said that uh, Joschka Fischer and the people who are now the politicians who are now working in the Green Party. They have been part of uh, Maoist communist groups. And this is a very big uh, difference. The communist movement in the 60s, 70s and 80s in Germany uh, was very uh, split up, such as today. And there have been a lot of Maoist groups. Uh, in Germany, we call them K groups, K for communismus, communism. And there was a lot of small communist uh, groups and the Maoist groups of them uh, already in the 70s and 80s, they were against the Soviet Union. They said that the, they have built up the theory of social imperialism, which says that uh, the Soviet Union is an imperialist power who is uh, disturbing the national uh, liberty fights of, for example, African countries or something. They said that uh, the Soviet uh, imperialism is trying to, uh, to make its influence in other countries and that this is nothing, nothing well. There were also Maoist groups who said that the the government of Franz Josef Strauss, who was the German chance, uh, chancellor, chancellor in this time, a very reactionary and conservative uh, politician, that uh, the German working class has to collaborate with him in order to fight Soviet Union. So what uh, we see here that that was very a uh, bad theory, a very bad uh, way to understand what imperialism is. And of course, uh, then, in the, especially in the 80s, 
we had a big um, eco uh, ecology ec ecologist movement uh, against um, uh, nuclear energy and against uh, like that the the the, the ecology is getting dirty and all that stuff and many of the communist groups from this time took part in these movements and the green party has been constructed by parts of these people and of course uh, these guys doing politics for many years they become very professional uh, professional how to talk how to convince people from their uh, positions and um, with this professionalism they became good politicians and they have left their anti-imperialist uh, point of views more and more and now in the end they are part of the party who is supporting um, who is supporting uh, war against Russia and, as you said, in 1999, the bombing of Yugoslavia. I think the function, the function that the Green Party has in Germany is to make a moral legitimation of German uh, imperialist uh, aggressions. As I've said, uh, war against other countries in Germany after two world wars that we have started, is still uh, a very big topic in the German uh, society. Uh, that's why the ruling class in Germany needs a party who is bringing a moral legitimation for German aggressive imperialist power. And the moral, the moral uh, legitimation uh, is, for example, that we are supporting uh, democratic uh, countries defending them, such as now Ukraine. In 1999, Yugoslavia was legitimated because of the... Um, uh, they said that Germany, because of its historical uh, responsibility, has to... Uh, uh, um, uh, um, has to do something against the new Auschwitz. They said uh, that the Yugoslavian power is doing mass murders to uh, the people. And Germany, because of its history, of its fascist history, now has the obligation, the responsibility to fight against this, to hinder the Yugoslavian power to make mass murders. And that's, that, that was the moral legitimation to throw bombs on Yugoslavia. Uh, now, Annalena Baerbock, our green uh, foreign minister, is saying that, for example, Ukraine is defending uh, women rights against Russia or the rights of LGBTQI community, all these things. We have, you know, we have conservative parties in Germany, such as the CDU, the Christian Democratic Party. Um, and the young people, you know, many young people, liberal, modern people, they don't really like their, their political points of view. They need a young, fresh, green, pro-LGBTQI uh, foreign minister who is telling them, okay, the, the war that we are doing against, uh, that we are leading against Russia uh, is for women rights and LGBTQI rights. So this is, I think, the function of the Green Party in Germany. And uh, yeah, this is an important point, but it's really pervert. I mean, how can you say that uh, the fascist, uh, the fascist, government in Ukraine is defending uh, women rights against against Russia and LGBTQI and gay rights against Russia when there are homophobic uh, and anti 
uh, anti-Russian and anti-labor uh, union forces in the in the state apparatus of of Ukraine. Did you heard uh, the speech of the President Putin, which taken place? few days ago because he said about this lgbtq uh, question and he said something like this that the russia support the uh, family's values and in this question russia is supported by the global south by the nation from africa south america asia And what do you think about this situation that we have confrontation because, between uh, NATO and the Russia and in this question of the uh, LGBTQ uh, uh, this is the confrontation between the NATO and the rest of the world and these ideas of the western countries are not uh, 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 the, the the majority of the world are not agree with this and and the question is uh, if in this economic war you are supporting Russia and the countries of the global south uh, do you uh, agree with Putin also in this question of the LGBTQ that it is uh, used like a tool by the Western countries to destroy the or uh, you are not agree with Putin and in this question you are supporting uh, Annalina Baerbock I think I would never support Annalina Baerbock in any question um, I think uh, yes of course I think the uh, This ideology, um, uh, not ideology. I mean, um, the this political topic of LGBTQI rights uh, is used to uh, moralized imperialist politics, and I can. I think we should just answer about this uh, against this moral that uh, a country. Uh, which is suppressed by the West, by sanctions or by uh, credit, credit conditions of the International Monetary Fund, uh, where people are getting poor, cannot pay their food and their energy and anything, that in these countries, uh, this poverty, which is a result of this politics, is also not helping LGBTQI community. That if a country is suppressed economically by Western imperialism, uh, also the gay and lesbian people in these countries are suppressed by this. So there is no, no uh, human rights that the West is bringing into this country. This is only ideology. It's not true. And you can see, as, as I've said, on the example of uh, Ukraine, where is a fascist government and they are very homophobic and very uh, anti-LGBTQI and they, they are fighting these people, you know? Okay, maybe I will ask this question one more time, but uh, a little uh, different. That... Uh, uh... The question of the homosexuality is something which existed with the humanity and with other spaces um, um, from always in, 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 in many species of the animals. We have example of the homosexuality and also in every in the history of the human societies in every country we have the the, 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 the uh, homosexuality and it is something which is not new the question which is new it is the the things which is uh, it, it's uh, it's uh, last 20 30 40 years it's something which for example we can't find 
in uh, in the books of the Karl Marx, uh, Frederick Engels, uh, Vladimir Lenin, or other cl classic of the Marxian Marxian thought. The, the the basic question if the the human race the human the human are divided for two two sexes women and men or we have different kind of sexes that, uh, that there are uh, uh, all all these stuffs and also uh, if there exists something like a biological woman, because in Poland we have some problems uh, two, two days, two years ago, the, there was a big movement uh, fighting for the abortion rights. And, but uh, this movement was taken by, by these uh, woke ideas, uh, which they uh, wrote the pro project for the abortion rights. And in this project for the abortion rights, they didn't use a word "woman." They they use a word "the uh, person with uh, uterus" or something like this, but not "woman." That it's uh, for me. It's uh, uh, I am in this question. I am traditional like Bolsheviks that. 8th of March is a is a is a day of day of women. I am uh, and also uh, it's it was a national holiday in Soviet Union. It was celebrated in in, in socialist Poland, and I see no, nothing wrong to using a word "woman." We need to use this word with with proud. But uh, unfortunately, there are some part of the left which now don't use this word woman and they promote ideas that we can that the that the biology it, it don't exist that it's in our mind it's totally idealistic ideas that if we are thinking that we are uh, not woman or man and uh, it's it's the uh, and in this question because the uh, uh, Putin, when he in his speech, he didn't speak about homose homosexuality. He speaks about this: that there is in the in the Russia there is men and women, and in Western countries there are the guys who are uh, uh, forget it about biology. Yeah, it's uh, you support him. I, what you are you support Putin in this question or 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 no? Well, I as I've said, I I would support uh, uh, Putin in uh, in the question of that uh, LGBTQI topic is used for uh, for imp imperialist ideology and imperialist control uh, of the world. But uh, actually, this topic is not really interesting for me. Maybe it's wrong that it's for me not interesting. But uh, I mean, if it's become, for example, the 8th of March, the International Fighting Day for the, for the rights of the women is uh, disturbed by this ideology, this would be a problem. But um, actually, I have I have not discussed so much with with people about these topics um, because I think other topics are more are more important. You know, if there is a person who says I want to be a man, although she is a biological from a biological point of view, a woman, I have nothing against it. You know, it's. When this, when this person is taking part in in our struggles, she or he is is welcome. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. And I am agree with you that it is not important question. But this not important question became one of the main question now in the time of the war. That in the because uh, I prefer 
when everybody talking true. I prefer that Biden and NATO said we are here because we want to expand, we want to take Ukraine, we want to destroy Russia, we want to take the Russian resources, we want money, oil, gas, etc. But no, no, they are not talking true. They are talking, we, it is the war of ideas that we are democratic and they are barbaric. We support yes. uh, LGBTQ and they, are, they don't support. And Putin uh, could, uh, could uh, ignore this thing, but he not ignore. He said, okay, do you want to play this game? Uh, I will play you with you this game. And so you are supporting the uh, transgender question and I support family question. And with me are the Islamic nations, uh, Africa, Catholic nation from uh, South Africa. Do you want to play the game of morality? Okay, the, the majority of the world is with me, with the conservative ideas of defending family. Yeah, it's true. But I think the main reason why many African and uh, Arabic countries are supporting Russia at the moment is not especially because of the LGBTQI questions, but uh, or because these countries and the people of the countries, they um, they understand what it means to be suppressed Uh, oppressed by NATO powers. When I talk with Arabic um, comrades and people here uh, in Germany and also with African people, um, or especially with Arabic people, um, they say, okay, for us it's completely clear that uh, Russia is defending itself against the NATO aggression. Yeah, because from Iraq and from Syria and Afghanistan, they understand that NATO is trying, uh, is is destroying countries and is destroying economies. That they, they understand what it means. Here in Germany, the people don't understand what it means because they are not destroyed by, by NATO. They are part of the NATO and one of the strongest NATO powers. But uh, in these countries, they understand, and that's why. I think uh, many countries now are on the side of Russia. They understand what it means to defend it, uh, itself. And you can see this, uh, you can also see this in the... Uh, Zagala Savania. Oi. Votings, of the votings uh, uh, in the United Nations. Yeah, you see that a uh, big part of the countries is not condemning uh, Russia's war in the United Nations. Uh, okay, comrade, um, I hope that you are not tired. Um, I will read some questions for you from the chat and ask my last question. Maybe I will start from my last question. Uh, do the um, your organization or other forces uh, which participating in the anti-war movement in Germany, do you have some problems from police, from the secret services? I would like to say that uh, in Poland we have this problem. People who are not uh, supporting the, uh, nar the government narrative, uh, they are attacked. Uh, some of them were uh, uh, they are, they were fired from from job. Uh, they uh, they are repressions. Uh, some guy now the uh, some people uh, were the police confiscated them the the laptop and telephones for for posting some things in the social media and also. Also, there was a process, a guy who said that, uh, uh, that he supported the, the, the special military operation. So the question is, do you have the same problem in, in, in Germany? And also, do you think that it is possible in Germany 
to to fight uh, for the uh, the solidarity with the people from Poland who are now the uh, they are repressed by the, the by the Polish state. Uh, uh, I don't know. That there are some guy. For example, there is one guy now who, which is in prison. He is uh, he is nationalist. He is anti-Semite also. But he is the first guy who organized a demonstration against involving Poland to the war in Ukraine, and he was uh, all 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 his life anti-Semite, and nobody cares. Now, uh, now they remember. Ah, oh, okay, you are not. Uh, so, so, so they arrest him. Uh, and do you think that it is possible to about guys like this? Uh, uh, I don't know. Wrote an article, say something that uh, because we we can like him or not, it is it is uh, it is uh, against the freedom of speech and also the the political repression make a Poland uh, push Poland to the authoritarian position already Biden in 2020 said that uh, Poland is authoritarian state he said this in the debate with Trump but the situation uh, after the beginning of the special military operation is worse and worse the it's Poland became in our eyes uh, something like a totalitarian state maybe not like Ukraine but the situation is very very bad so I call you and the comrades from Germany to in to thinking about this that they are guys from Poland which are now the victims of the repressions because they are this, this is anti-war activity most of them are not our comrades this is the nationalist but uh, i think that it is important to to make some international campaign uh actually we have made an international uh, solidarity article for josef Skala. maybe you have heard about uh, he's the um the the vice boss of the communist party of bohemia and like the communist party in czech republic it's in uh, it is in, in your seat internet yeah it's on our website too it's an article solidarity with joseph scala i don't know if i uh say his name right maybe he's joseph scala or something but I, 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 I have it. Uh... Yeah, but actually in Germany, you, yes, exactly. That's a... Well, in Germany, we uh, have, um, we have a new law. And this law says that uh, you can go into a prison if you uh, say something that um, wait a second Uh, if you say something that trivializes, that downplays the the so-called Russian aggressive uh, war, the the Russian attack, for example, if you say things like uh, that uh, that Russia didn't have any other choice to attack Ukraine, uh, this is something you can uh, get a very big uh, punishment for uh, the justi uh, justification and um, also you can get very big problems when you show the uh, the signs of the Russian uh, military intervention the V uh, Z and the Z and the oh. um, this the this 
In Russian it's Georgiev, uh, Georgievskaya Lientochka. Ah, da, da. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, вот эта лента, которая... Uh, orange, orange and uh, uh, black, I, I suppose. Yes, it's an orange, uh, black uh, thing that uh, is from the time of the... Uh, war, uh, of the Second World War, and it was a sign of the Red Army soldiers who were fighting against the uh, Wehrmacht soldiers. And this is now uh, forbidden in Germany. <laughs> it's a scandal, you know, because we are the country the Wehrmacht was from. And now the sign of the soldiers who were fighting against these Wehrmacht soldiers is forbidden. This is a scandal. And uh, we are uh we try to fight technically again. if you if you uh, tomorrow go to the street with this uh, what can they do that to to you um you you can get uh let me see if i can find the article 10 uh, uh, 10 000 euro Yes, you can get uh, money. You have pay, you you have to pay you have to pay money. Uh, well, it's hard to me for me to explain, but yeah, if you you go out on the street, especially on demonstration. Uh, you it's possible that they take you out and you have to pay uh, money yes exactly well uh, this is uh, the suppression in germany also um, when there are big demonstrations and a few weeks ago an anti-war activist in berlin uh, he was getting uh, he was uh, well he got problems with the german uh, justice system uh, because uh, he said uh, that he can understand the reasons vladimir putin is uh, is saying he just said he understands the russian president and that was a case for German uh, justice system to uh, to make problems with him. I, I I don't remember what his what is the the punishment was, but I can find out. Yeah, but yeah, we have a big uh, suppression and oppression against the freedom of speech in Germany. Uh, also about this topic, we wrote a speech. You can find on our on our website and yeah i think we have to to fight uh, against this because as you said uh, the imperialist powers uh, with their states they try to build um, up uh, authoritarian structures state structures who make it more uh, to make it more difficult to anti-war uh, activists to fight yeah. Uh, ah, uh, comrade, do you have some question for me, or uh, it's for another dis discussion? If not, uh, if you want to ask some something about Poland, it's good time. Yeah, I mean, maybe the last question about Poland. You were talking about it uh, a lot, but uh, how is how would you describe how the struggle against uh, the the nato war uh, is getting is it getting more difficult in poland for the for the anti-war movement and which role is playing anti-russian racism and anti-communism no i think that the the worst was was the first week first week uh, when it, it all this started it was uh, atmosphere like in the fascist state that uh, in every social media 
there was uh, organized very professional campaign uh, campaign organized i don't know by who by maybe by bought from ukraine or the some forces it was very well organized all the forces with which were criticizing the 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 banderites were totally attacked uh, and uh, and uh, the, 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 the beginning of, of the special military operation was a moment that the Polish population were silent. And it's, it was maybe two or three months. Uh, it was silent. Uh, I, I had personal problems for this. Uh, uh, I already said about uh, the problems which my ex-comrades, uh, but also I have problems in, in my family with my wife, that my wife were personally attacked because I was one of the victims of the, of the attack uh, in, in, uh, in media. They, they, uh, in big media, they talked about my, my speeches, that I am the agent of Putin, agent of Russia, I don't know. And uh, uh, and the, some people attacked my wife in social media and it was a very bad atmosphere and the danger of divorce. And I stopped making my political activity in Polish language for, I don't know, one month uh, that uh, it was atmosphere like this that uh, and i was not the only one <laughs> most of these people which i know uh, they in march they are they, they were not active so the best uh, the worst moment in in um, in uh, to organize something was the beginning uh, it start uh, it's starting to change one of the important moment is July. It is the anniversary of the massacre in Wołyń. So the uh, it's, it's, it's very strategic things from from perspective of of, of this war because the the Bandera Shuhevich and other UPA uh, leaders are responsible for killing more than 100,000 Poles. And now they are the official heroes of the Ukraine. So the, the, some of the, um, the forces which are anti-imperialist, they, uh, they were active to com commemorate the Wojny massacre. And it was something which, uh, uh, which break the silence that the people go to the street. There was some manifestation, uh, and also it was the moment when the first uh, economic uh, problems uh, were. Uh, we already see that inflation, growing prices, and and also uh, very very um, because of the millions of uh, Ukrainians in Poland, the prices of renting houses are growing uh, very, very, uh, sometimes two times, three times. I don't know, you can imagine that for uh, renting a room, uh, you paid uh, 200 euro and three months later is 500 euro. It's like this, uh, that because uh, all the empty spaces were, uh, uh, there were uh, two, three or four million people which are in Poland and uh, that uh, uh, one guy, which one of the richest guy in Poland, which is pro proprietor of many houses, uh, he was proud of this and this, ah, yes, uh, uh, because of the war in Ukraine and because of the Ukrainian in Poland, now I can rent my houses with uh, uh, the, 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 the prices are growing and also the rent is growing. So I am very happy because of this war. So, so see, it is very cynical person. And in YouTube, he, he said this uh, with open problem. 
but the first uh, the first political action against involvement uh, Poland in in this war I think that it is it was August so you see uh, from February until August it is six months with any political activity we have this Vowen anniversary but it was not the same because it was historic question but in August it started and uh, after was a Nord Stream and and um, and also I, I have theory I don't know if it's true or not but many guys which are very active in this uh, Banderite propaganda in Poland they are uh, uh, they they already died or uh, or I don't know they they have another problems but the the and also all these lies of the Ukrainian propaganda uh, it's not working it's it's worked in first weeks but now it's not worked uh, how much and and all and also there was uh, mm, and there was uh, and I think that the most important moment for the Polish society is a comportment is, is a comportment of the Zelensky in the time when the Ukrainian missile hit Poland uh, and killed two Poles. The Pol everybody knew that it was the uh, Ukrainian anti-missile system and it was accident and this missile uh, killed two, Pol two Poles in the Przewodów. But Zelensky, he, he can't... Uh, um uh, how to say say sorry for uh, excuse he he can't excuse he can't say yes it's our missile and i'm sorry of this uh, came to poland gave some money gave flowers i don't know make some jest that it was mistake uh, but, but no 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 the the ukrainian propaganda ukrainian government all the time they say it was russian 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 we need to make a third world war you poland have to uh, make name uh, with nato war against russia you were attacked by the russian and poland polish people they start to understand the things which i repeated from first day that zelensky he's a psychopath and he's a dangerous guy Nobody, nobody listened to me. But after all this guy stuff that he ordered to to bombard the nuclear plant in Zaporozhye, that he he don't want to excuse for the bombing Poland and another stuff and all this, all this, all the time he's going from one country to another or speaking by video and give me money give me a weapon give me r give me money give me weapon people are tired we have already economic problems <laughs> and in the first weeks if you if you ask some polish woman uh, 20 years uh, what is your favorite man in the world uh, and she, my favorite man is Zelensky. I love him, and he was a rock star. Now not. It's finished. It's finished for Zelensky. The, right. the um, people starting not only don't loving him, but uh, they are people starting to hate him because of the economic problems and because of the lies and because of the danger of the world. So the situation is changing. And 9, 19 of January, we have first big demonstration in Warsaw. It was a few thousand people who marched in 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 in, in street of, of Warsaw. After we have uh, uh, um, there was eleven months with nothing, and after we have uh, every week new in, we uh, new anti-war initiative. <coughs> that there are some guy his name is Sikulski he was he is a um, historian uh, conservative he was advisor of Duda president Duda you know it, it's not our guy 
it's a it's a guy uh, from the side of the our enemies but he uh, he's starting to uh, criticize that Poland is uh, is using by NATO and pushing to war against Russia and he said it is not our war he, he created with other guys Sebastian Piton Polish uh, movement anti war Uh, so uh, second initiative, uh, the the professor Maria Szyszkowska, she organized she organized the uh, peaceful congress. It will uh, taking place in Warsaw, set of seven uh, of March. Because you are living in East Germany, maybe you or some member of your movement, uh, your, your your organization, go to Warsaw, seven of March to have contact with uh, because it is organized by the academics but it will there will be people from all the all the um, anti-war uh, movement in, in Poland and it is good the good occasion go to there <coughs> it is only a few hours uh, from 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 uh, to go to the Warsaw and make contacts to to make some some uh, some relations so so now we have uh, we have uh, uh, we have some some posters in the in the streets uh, against war now something is started and i am proud because i pushed these guys from from first day do something do something i talked with him and out of the other guy and now these people starting to make uh, make something so i am optimistic uh, oh. i am optimistic and also i am optimistic because of uh, the the government can do nothing about this because uh, you you can Uh, how many people you can, uh, how many time you can repeat the primitive propaganda it's all the putin thoughts it only you have the economic problems uh, you have the very very stupid militarization and uh, all this all this stuff all these tanks all these cannons all this all this ammunition it's it's going to ukraine for free polish people pay taxes very big taxes because now they introduce new taxes and uh, they they uh, buy weapons and these weapons go to ukraine and poland are polish citizens are against us so um, now it's good moment to organize the anti-war movement and i am optimist sounds good We should um, we should uh, get into exchange about our struggles uh, in Germany and in Poland, and I would make to I would like to make a, maybe a, a stream with you uh, because um, every week we are discussing in our uh, local groups about uh, the political topics of the week. And I would like to invite you for uh, such a meeting online. Maybe okay. in some I am weeks we should, because my uh, my comrades will have a lot of uh, questions about that because uh, it's for us very uh, interesting to make exchange uh, about our struggles. Yeah. Okay, but you need to remember that uh, I am in in France. I no, am... we, do, we do it online. We do it yes, online. Yes, 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 yes. But uh, I, 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 I talked about the situation in Poland, uh, which I support. Which I think that uh, my activity also helped to 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 start this, uh, this thing. But uh, I uh, I have also problem that. Uh, uh, that uh, when i said about the repression uh, i'm thinking about me uh, already one year ago when i was in poland in 2021 i was arrested by the polish uh, secret service i was released after a few a few hours but uh, yeah. you know it's uh, it's uh, my uh, the 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 uh, 
the I am waiting to the election which will take in place in September and I hope that this government will finish because uh, these guys which are have uh, are responsible for the secret service and police and uh, uh, all these uh, repressions they are very dangerous uh, they are uh, they are russophobic fanatics and uh, they uh, they have police uh, which <coughs> they used so if you have something uh, to invite I, it will be honored to me to participate but i spreche ich verstehe nicht deutsch my comrades understand english very well better than me <laughs> okay so so i will read all the questions uh, you can answer uh, for one or for all what do you want but uh, i will i will read uh, the comments and uh, i will not uh, interrupt when you finish we will finish because my wife is already tired and she wait for me so firstly um, um it is common in canada that it is not a question in canada the deputy prime minister second in command of the nation christina freeland is a ukrainian nationalist he her grandfather was in the own during the war he was editor of the pro-nazi newspaper in occupied krakow um, she is extremely anti-russian and will build a large monument of the victims of communism in the capital city uh, Junge Welt is a great German daily newspaper. I have an online subscription and and read it in Google Translate. And what uh, no, first question? What happened with Jugendwiderstand? What's the difference between your organization and them? There is not so many information about German communists in English. So first question, second question, what do German things of Merkel who stated that means agreements were merely to buy time to militarize Ukraine and that is and that she intentionally cheated Russians, the West had no intention of, of fulfilling them. Mm. Uh, no, no, no. I got the question. Uh, yes, third, uh, how is Eric Honecker perceived by the mainstream? How is he perceived by the modern German communist? Um, and that's all. Okay, uh, I tried to answer all the questions. The first question was about Jugendwiderstand. Uh, Jugendwiderstand, as the name says, well, the the translation of the word is uh, resist youth resistance and uh, it was a political group of um, young activists in Berlin only in Berlin and uh, as I know they had a Maoist uh, ideology uh, they made uh, a lot of uh, uh, sports, like uh, fighting sports. They uh, they uh, have been in Berlin, uh, made the sports and were reading, I think, a lot of theory, especially uh, Marxist-Leninist-Maoist uh, theory. And what they did was uh, that they have uh, attacked... Um, uh, so-called anti-German uh, activists in Berlin. I mean, maybe you have heard about the anti-German movement. Anti-Deutsch? Anti-Deutsch, exactly. My brother, uh, to tell me, but I don't understand that. Well, it's a good with topic. Let's, yeah, 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 it's it's too much for this evening. But uh, you can say that uh, this is uh, so called they call themselves left people. Uh, left political powers but they support Israel and uh, the Jugendwiderstand people they have uh, made many attacks on these people 
And as, as I've said, it was a young uh, a youth group. <coughs> and some people say that they have dissolved, that they uh, don't exist anymore. Uh, but some people say that they still exist and they are working in the underground. I don't know what they are doing, but the difference between them and us is definitely uh, that our political aims are completely uh, completely differ from the aims of this group. Our political aim is to organize a clarification process in Germany and to build up a communist party with a revolutionary program and Kader, uh, Kader, uh, Kadri. Kadri, 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 uh, Kadri's, uh, Kadri's, I don't know, Kadri, Polski. And, Kadri uh, decyduje o wszystkim, Stalin. Uh-huh. Uh, people, and this is our aim, and I think the Jugendwiderstand was more a youth group Uh, who successfully organized young people who were interested in Marxist Leninist Maoist theory and to do sports. But I don't know so much about them because I'm not so interested in, in these kinds of political organizations. Uh, the second point was a question was about uh, our chancellor, uh, our um, uh, Chancellor before Scholz, Merkel, and the uh, comrade asked how the German uh, society perceived her uh, interview, uh, where she said that uh, Minsk II was only a possibility for Germany to give time you to Ukraine to uh, militarize and uh, to to send uh, weapon more weapons. Uh, to Ukraine in order to uh, to uh, prepare for a war against Russia and that was not at all a topic in German uh, media uh, such as I've told you about Nord Stream 2 uh, the, the, um, nobody was doing a scandal about this that uh, Minsk 2 was a big lie i was reading i am reading a lot of russian new, uh, newspapers and of course in these newspapers uh it was a big scandal but in germany it was not at all uh, a topic as i said our ruling class is really aiming to uh keep this uh keep these things uh, secret that our politicians are are lying all the time And the third point is about Erich Honecker. Well, <laughs> this uh, against big uh, difference in Western and German, uh, Western and Eastern Germany. As I said, I'm living in Eastern Germany, and uh, there is a very, uh, especially between the old people, uh, there is a very good uh, relationship to. Uh, uh, there is a good relationship to the GDR. Um, If we had time now, we can talk about the also about the problems of Honecker and the differences between Honecker and Ulbricht, but it's not the time now. But I can say that in Eastern Germany, the uh, especially in the older generation, there is a good uh, relationship to to GDR. Uh, the young uh, generation, the people who were born in the 90s, they don't know much about uh, their socialist uh, history. Uh, so they don't, uh, many times they don't even know anymore who Honecker or Ulbricht or uh, what the GDR was. In Western Germany, uh, there is a big uh, hate against the GDR. Uh, there is a lot of prejudices against uh, GDR. They said that it was an economy <coughs> that didn't work and that it was a dictatorship uh, where people like Honecker were oppressing the people. But this uh, point of view uh, in the, is very famous in Western Germany and not so much in Eastern Germany. Yeah. 
that's it. Uh, there is um, the last, uh, the last. The KO does not like the DKP. You are the uh, uh, from this DKP um, late uh, before you were a member of this. Yes. Yes. Uh, me personally, I was not member of the DKP. Uh, but many of our members, they have left uh, the DKP. Uh, there was uh, problems with the strategy of the DKP. It's called anti-monopolist strategy. It's a big topic. Uh, we uh, can discuss about this in another stream, but also we have published some articles about this topic. But our relationship to the DKP at the moment is... Uh, that we are in a, a, a solidaric uh, relationship to the DKP. We think that uh, DKP is one of the most important parts of the uh, communist <coughs> movement in Germany. And for our cl clarification process, uh, uh, we want that the DKP is taking part in this clarification. Uh, it's not about not liking or liking. We don't have these emotions. It's about political uh, relationship and our relationship is quite good to them. Do you know Scott Ritter? Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I invited here uh, he, him in this channel uh, two days ago. Um, I think that it is a good idea because uh, he said that uh, he, he he would like to come back. That uh, in a few weeks uh, I can organize some some meeting with Scott Ritter from USA, with you from Germany. I can invite somebody from Poland, from France, from and we will make some some conversation how to build the international anti-war movement or stuff like that. <laughs> Interesting. We should prepare this very well. Yes, <coughs> because uh, I am, I don't know, something in, in my throat. Okay, comrades, very, very thank you. It's two hours. Uh, I think that we, you are tired. I also, uh, I am tired because <laughs> I am after work. Uh, uh So it's good time to finish, but we are in contact. Uh, I will finish this, but don't uh, disconnect. <laughs>